Let's pray. God, find us as we sit in the comfort of these pews. Find us and invite us to hear you. Amen. Amen. Well, it was the place. It was the place where Peter first really encountered Jesus. He had met Jesus before at his mother-in-law's. There had some healing had happened there, but this was really, truly the first encounter. And in the Gospel of Luke, this first conversation is right at this place, a lake shore, a lake shore. It's the place where the boats were harbored, the place where the nets were gathered, and the place of decisions. I thought of Peter's encounter there. Um, these, these boats that had, had come back and they were overflowing, almost enough to capsize the boat. That was his experience. And I imagine Peter at that moment, uh, when, when Jesus first asked him to, to set those boats out and go out a little deeper, to be quite skeptical, to be quite cautious. But they did send out a boat. Fish, of course, a staple, nourishment important for the diets of all of the folks that live there, gathered around that Galilean sea. And they were fishermen out to bring nourishment back to the community. They had gone from a really meager catch experience the night before to now something that was so abundant. Now, I wanted to get a little perspective on this whole fishing expedition, so I called our own resident fisherman extraordinaire, Gary Spiker. <laughs> Gary is recovering from surgery at home. Hi, Gary, I see that you're worshiping with us online. Healing prayers continue for you. Gary, I, I wanted to find out a little bit about his experience because I figured among all of us he would, would give us the, the best insight. I said, what, what kind of catch have you had in, in, in your lifetime? And, and so I learned that um, when you're in a fishing tournament, it's called a bag. He said, my best tournament bag was, and it's like eight hours, I learned that, 35 pounds of fish. That's a, that's a lot of fish. That's a lot of fish. Um, we, um, so celebrating, good, good job, Gary, on that. I think this story may have you beat, however, because uh, this story, they, they found some ancient fishing boats um, in, in the Sea of Galilee in more recent days. Just to give you an idea of what that boat size was, it was like probably 26-ish feet long, seven feet by four. Can you imagine how many fish were in that boat to almost capsize the boat. It just paints a picture in my mind. This abundance and then this moment there, um, there was a power in that fishing expedition unlike what Peter had ever seen before. And indeed, it was a fearful experience, but also one of sheer amazement. Sheer amazement. It was this catch then that, that brought Peter to his knees do you hear the body language there? He saw this happen. It brought him to his knees. He was partnering this body language with, with words that said, I'm a sinner, like, uh, leave me alone and, and just let me be over here. Now, well, probably he probably wasn't talking so much about being this moral failure, but really words of contrast to the holiness of God, the abundant power of God, and his sense of his own humanity. He wanted to withdraw from that, a little bit of fear. And, and here is where we start to see a bit of Peter's faith being encouraged by Jesus. Jesus has a conversation back and says, don't, don't fear. And then he, he invites Peter into something. He says, you know, from now on, you can, you can gather people. And he used the play on words, the fishing words that we're all familiar with. You'll be fishers of men and, and women. He gives this encouragement. And in that encounter, this faith becomes personal. 
They had been called, gathered together. They were being formed in that moment for the purpose of being sent. Yeah, sounds kind of like our mission statement, doesn't it? Gathered, formed in the likeness of Christ, with Christ, in the presence of Christ, for the purpose of being sent. Yeah, that was happening. That was discipleship right there. All of that was happening, and they, they did. Peter, the one who began so cautious and probably skeptical about this whole encounter, now moving a little bit through his curiosity to committed, maybe even captivated, because what does it say? He left everything there and followed. And not just Peter, but his companions too, the friends along the way. I think this scene is, is a familiar one. We've heard this passage before, but it's so good to, to invite our own imagination in, like to this shoreline. So here's gonna be my shoreline here. That place of, of decision, um, this place of, of knowing, standing on something that, that we know on the ground, to where that water was meeting here, that water of uncertainty, of chaos, of um, things below the surface that they couldn't see. I mean, that's the thrill of fishing, right? <laughs> if you knew where all the fish, you have a good depth finder. Some of you know where the fish are when you fish. I know we've got that, that technology. But, but honestly, you know, that's the, the whole thing about fishing is whether you use a big net, um, which Gary Spiker did not probably use a big net. Uh, whether you have that or not, there's, there's the surface of what we see, calm waters or stormy, where hurricanes butt up against the land and the waves are wild and loud. The storms of life, the calm places of life, our own life experience. This place of shoreline fascinates me because there's so much that comes right together. And here we are, and here is God, and what do we do in that encounter, in that place? And we all decide. Companions in Christ is a study that I've participated in, and it's wonderful. It invites us to think about our own spiritual life and practices that we can have on a regular rhythm. And in the introduction of that study, it uses a similar image to our spiritual formation. If we think about the water out there, we can see the surface, we can see, oh, I think this is what prayer looks like, or I think this is what service looks like, or I think this is what generosity looks like. We can see in the surface, but there is so much more below the surface that we cannot see. Think of the iceberg in the movie Titanic, right? There's a lot below the surface. There's so much more in our spiritual life that we can explore if we seek and take a step from the shallow water into a deeper place. There's so much more that you can experience in the way that you serve and the way that you give if indeed you decide to take one step from the shoreline into your prayer life into your serving life, into your generosity life, all of the ways that we are gathered and formed and sent. The things that are on the surface of our life, our current experience, there is more. There is more beyond what we can see right today. There's more to God than what we see today. So there is a mystery to God, isn't there? There's a certainty of God in humanity and Jesus Christ, and there is also a mystery. And so our call to be disciples, and this call, by the way, was not just for Peter. It is our invitation to, to answer a call into discipleship. It's not just a call for pastors, but it's a call for all of us through our baptism to think. Where am I? What, what, what shoreline edge am I standing on right now? And what else more might there be if I took a step and I went from a shallow water on a boat, on the deeper water, through any of the ways that I practice and live as a disciple? 
wants to hold on to that image of, of shoreline as an invitation for all of us. Someone in our round table said, gosh, I wish for, for just one moment I could have that experience that Peter had. Wouldn't that be something? Now, our experience will probably look different than Peter's. But I do want us to think about how often in Scripture we hear Jesus encountering and inviting and teaching and working outside The song that we began our worship service talked about how God is revealed oftentimes just in nature, right? He was teaching Peter about discipleship with with fish and water. There's so many stories in scripture that brings nature in as well as knowing the fact that God first revealed God's self through creation. And then God reveals God's self through Jesus the Christ. And that's what we celebrate. That's what we praise. Rhoda had an excellent children's message. That's what we celebrate. That's what we praise. And so here's my invitation for you today. Is to spend 10 minutes outside, if you can, every day this week. Now, if you happen to to find a shoreline, that might be really cool. Because I think there's a lot you can think about right there. But I want you to see if you can find 10 minutes to be outside. I want you to do this to notice. I want you to pay attention. I want you to see in eyes that will allow you to say, oh, God, I am in the presence of God right here, right here. I found that place when when I read the gospel along a shoreline, the water was very still. I didn't even realize until later Did any of you see the Canadian geese that that swam out to the deeper waters as I started reading that scripture? (laughs) Did any of you notice the, the, the hint of the change of the seasons that the green trees are starting to just turn? This is this new page, this new place. There's so much that we can 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 see if if we simply take the time and notice. Ten minutes a day. Who's in this week? Gonna do it? All right. So I want to invite you to simply do it and be present and be in amazement of God. Now, if you want to take a picture of it or a video, you can, but don't do that until after you're fully present. Just be present to God there. And I'd love to see your pictures, actually. We'll do something with with those. Ten minutes a day. Another day I wasn't at the lake shore, but I was walking home after a walk, and there it was the sky that was amazing, and a sense of awe and humbleness, and powerful storm clouds that rolled across the space, in the presence of God. Another day it was simply leaning back against a chain link fence, and looking up and tracing the leaves and the branches breathing in, paying attention to my own breath in that space of gratitude and praise. Be curious what your week is like. And if you're like the person in the round table who says, I'd love to have that experience just like Peter, I will pray indeed that you will have an experience of God's presence in this next week, uniquely yours. It's out of a place of gratefulness then that we're grounded in gratitude for God in our life that results in what we do on that shoreline place in our life. How is it that we then respond? And oftentimes when we have that courage or that curiosity to take that first step, it's because we're grateful. Or it's because we're in a stormy place of life and we just have to lean into something, and there we find God. We're going to begin this series called Pathway to Generosity over the next few weeks. Our response not only to all the ways of discipleship includes our, our response of generosity. 
We think about our financial gifts because we are followers of, of Jesus and it's out of a place of gratefulness and God's presence in our life that we hear an invitation. You may have received some things in the mail and, and, and this, to me, re- reminds me of, of Peter's journey from cautious to curious to cheerful to conscientious to celebratory to captivated. And that's a way that we can even think about our response with our uh, financial gifts, the spiritual practice of generosity. Where perhaps you find yourself being quite cautious or even skeptical of this whole thing of offering financial gifts to a local church like St. Paul's and you say, I'm not sure I can afford to give, I'm not sure how to give. To maybe curious, well, I'm testing the waters and I give when something moves me, maybe a special offering and you decide to give. Maybe you're a cheerful uh, wanderer on this path, I give regularly a specific amount with joy. Or a conscientious giver, I am growing in my giving by increasing the percentage I give. Or how about celebratory? I give 10% of my income away each year and captivated, I'm building my life on generosity by going beyond 10% in my giving. A wandering path that we might pray about finding where it is that we find ourselves. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, we sit in the sanctuary and we seek your holiness among us through our prayers and through the companionship of other travelers on the way. We pray, God, that you watch us, that we are sure that you listen to our prayers, and that we might be then found to be listening and recognizing you and responding to you. God, we, we do pray for you to be in our prayer life, in our spiritual formation practices of covenant groups, of developing a rule of life, of being outside in your wonderful and marvelous creation, in the way that we gather together as your people, in the ways that you form us in your likeness, and in all the ways that you call us to be sent to this world in our serving, our financial giving. God, we pray this prayer today and we invite you into our spiritual journey. Meet us on that shoreline. Offer us the words that we need to hear. Extend the invitation that you extend to each one. And God, may we celebrate your love, the love that we know in that all familiar verse. God, you so loved the world that you gave your son for all of us and that you came to set our world right again. May it be so. Amen.